Now there's a lot of different options and features inside of Shortcuts A Lot's trace image feature. So I didn't want to create one huge video for the trace image option in Shortcuts A Lot because there's a lot of different features and there's a lot of different ways of going about tracing an image. So today we're gonna focus on the trace image feature and we're gonna learn a little bit about resampling, smoothing, and a little bit of detail. Now just as a disclaimer, if you're using Google Images to find images, you want to make sure with the website that's providing them that it's okay for you to do so. You also want to make sure that if you're using it for commercial use that that website is okay with the commercial use as well. Now here I am in Google Images and you'll notice at the top of the screen here there is an option for tools. Okay, so if you click on tools, a little drop down will come up here and the first one that you see is size. Now size doesn't always mean that it's a higher resolution, but when you're looking for images, you always wanna start with a search under the large size if possible. If you can't find something in a large size, you may have to go to a medium or just use the any size feature. And that's where the resample feature is really gonna help you out. But whenever possible, you wanna to try to find a large version. Now with that said, I'm not actually gonna use any of these images. I'm gonna use the Dreaming Tree logo as an example. And before I get into this, I kinda of wanna show you what resampling does. And I'm gonna open up my Photoshop just to use this as a demonstration here. So you'll notice that this file is, and you don't need to learn this, I'm just using this as kind of a visual aid. Now this image that I opened up is 1600 pixels wide, and a pixel is basically just a square. So if we zoom in a lot, you can see that this entire image is made up of little squares. Now you'll also notice, right now I'm at 100%. If I zoom in to 500%, you can see the pixelation, as it's called. Zooming in is going to uncover pixelation like this. What resampling does is it takes the image, it makes it bigger without really zooming in on it. It uses a special algorithm to kind of make up more pixels so that it looks more detailed. So again, this is just a visual aid. I'll show you how this works in shortcuts a lot in a moment, but I wanna show you here. Now, if I was to resize this and resample it to 500%, it's gonna look really, really big, but at 500%, I'm gonna bring the zoom tool back down to 100%, and you can see here, now this is what it looks like at 500% resampled. You can see there's not as much pixelation, and it's smoother. Okay, so that, now if we zoom into 500%, you'll start to see the pixelation, but you can see how nice and smooth it is. So in essence, what Shortcuts A Lot is doing is it's making the image larger without accentuating the pixelation, without making the pixels look horrible. So what I've done is I've actually saved my logo at three different sizes to kind of give you an idea of the types of images you may find on Google. So here's one at 200 pixels, 800 pixels, and 1600 pixels. Let me open up the 200 pixel version first. Now this image is the equivalent of finding a kind of a black and white or a silhouette image on Google Images. So if I zoom in here, you can see the lack of detail. For example, let's just focus on this little star here. Now that to me doesn't really look like a great looking star. It's gonna come out very rough and round and just not very good looking. We can go in here under the output settings and the output settings is a section here that will help you kind of shape the final result. So I'm gonna set this to zero so it doesn't do any smoothing and I'm gonna update the preview. And now you can see that looks like a, a little bit of a better star okay because we didn't do any smoothing to it but now let's set this back to 98 how it was and update the preview and you can see how it goes back to how it looked before we removed the smoothing and now let's resample it so what we're going to do is take this and kind of run it through a process that generates a larger image without zooming in on it so it's kind of making up pixels based on the image let's set it to two times Let's update the preview, and now let's zoom in. Okay, now that's a little bit better. It's still not great, but it's a little bit better. Now let's change the smoothing here to about 30 and update the preview, and now you can see it's starting to look more like a star. Let's set this to zero and update the preview. 
and now it's really starting to look like a star. Now again, this is a very, very low resolution image. It's 200 pixels. So Shortcuts Lot does not have a lot of data to work with. Now right now, I'm working in monochrome mode. And when you work in monochrome mode, you have an option to set the contrast. When you change it to color layers, you don't have the contrast option. Under single color, you do as well. So we can kind of work with that a little bit. And we're just kind of visually looking at the image and visually determining what you think will look best or what you think Shortcuts sure Lot will have an easier time handling to get the best end result. And that again is subjective and it really comes down and boils down to what you're happy with. So let's go ahead and update the preview here and take a look at the result. And I kind of don't like that. I'm gonna decrease the contrast a bit. I'm gonna update the preview. Okay, and that's not bad considering it's a 200 pixel uh, image. Now, again, if we increase the smoothness here, it's really gonna round those corners and it's gonna look less like a star. So now going back to what I was talking about as far as finding higher resolution images, I'm gonna go into the trace feature and I'm gonna open up the 800 pixel version, which is a higher resolution version of this file. And let's take a look at what we have here when we zoom in. Now, right away, you can tell that because originally, just based on the original image that we found, it has more pixels, which means it has more information to help Shortcuts a lot trace the image better. Now, we can go ahead and increase and decrease the contrast. And as you can see here, because we have more information, less things happen when we adjust this. It's almost like you're just fine-tuning it a little bit, okay? And I honestly, I, I don't think that you're really going to be able to tell the difference whether you have it at, well, obviously at zero here, it's a huge difference, but at 9, 20, 40, the images are so subtle that it really doesn't matter. So contrast isn't really coming into play right now. Now smoothing, on the other hand, let's take a look at what happens if we don't use smoothing. Let's update the preview. Now at zero, at the value zero here, it doesn't do any smoothing. It's just going based off of what's there. Now if we change this to 98, which is the default, you'll kind of see that it removed some of the pixels and it is a little bit more rounded here. So that is gonna make for a cleaner cut because it removes nodes. It kind of consolidates things and makes it smoother. So you can see here at the top, it's showing the nodes. Each one of these little dots represents a node. And if we set this to zero and update the preview, you'll notice that the nodes almost triple. Now having a lot of nodes is not necessarily a bad thing, but it can be because it may take your machine a little bit longer to cut the file. So my suggestion would be to kind of find a middle ground. And in my case here, I'm just gonna set this to 50 and take a look at what the smoothing did. And you can see that the number of nodes has significantly diminished while still maintaining the shape that I'm looking for. So this is an 800 pixel image and I'm actually very happy with the trace that it did here. It's very accurate. Now let's take a look at what happens with a 16 or 1200 pixel image. So I have my 1600 pixel image here. I'm gonna open it up and right off the bat, you can see that there's already a thousand nodes. Let's zoom in on the star again to kind of use that as a reference. And let's update the preview. Okay, and that looks really good to me as well. Let's take the smoothing off completely. Now you can see the number of nodes here. It's significantly higher because it is higher resolution. So let's smooth this down. Let's go about 20. Okay, and that did a little bit, but not much on the star. Let's, let's set it at the default of 98 and update the preview. Okay, and now we have 679 nodes. It's a pretty complex image, so you're gonna have a lot of nodes when it comes to complexity. And this looks like a nice star to me. I like it, I'm happy with it. We can kind of play with the contrast a little bit if we want to kind of fine tune things. And again, playing with this. Now, the higher the value goes, you can see that it's kind of starting to almost bleed. And we don't want that. We want those lines to be nice and crisp. We don't want to see any of this little pixelation that sometimes occurs. You can see the little dots there. That is going to make for a very, very bad trace. So we want to remove that if possible. Get those lines nice and crisp. Okay, so let's update the preview here. And that looks really nice. So I'm gonna zoom out here and take a look at the overall image. 
I think it looks good. And what we can do at this point, if we're happy with the result, we can just hit OK. Now if you have this little checkbox, prompt to continue tracing checked, when you hit OK, a window is going to come up and ask you if you want to trace again. If you don't want that window to pop up, you can just uncheck that and then hit OK. Or you can save it as an SVG directly from this window. If you don't have to do any other manipulation, you can just hit Save as SVG. And I'll call this Dreaming Tree Trace. And I'll save it to the desktop. Otherwise, you can just click OK, and there is our image. It's actually a very, very good trace, and this was the 1600 pixel version. Now let's kind of zoom in and take a look at the detail on this. That looks really nice. Okay, now let me just show you. We'll put this over here for a second, and let's trace the 200 pixel image and just kind of play around with it until we get what we consider pretty decent. And again, you can see here, the lower the resolution, the worse it's going to trace. So we're definitely going to want to resample this at least two times. Zoom in and see. Can update the preview. Make sure that you have show nodes selected here so you can actually see the outline. And see that doesn't look that great either, but let's Bring the smoothing down to zero and kind of see what the result is. And that has more of a star shape now, but again, it's kind of jagged and just not very clean. So we can go in and mess around with the contrast a little bit and try to kind of set it until we feel like we've kind of defined the lines a little bit better. Update the preview, and I'm just going to go with that. I'm going to go with that. I'm going to hit OK. And now we can kind of put it side by side with the 1600 pixel image that we traced next to the 200 pixel image that we traced. Now if you cut it out really big, you're going to see all those little imperfections and you know just the jaggedness of it. When it gets smaller, you don't notice it as much. But depending on you know how big you're going to cut it, and actually, regardless of how big or small you're going to cut it, you definitely want to find higher resolution images. 200 pixels is usually not going to cut it. Um, I'd go 4, 5, 600, and I'll show you here. Let's get rid of the 200 pixel one, and let's trace the, I think it's an 800 pixel one. Okay, let's get the 800 pixel version here. And you know, one thing I just realized is I didn't actually show you let me just open these up real quick on my Mac. Okay, so these are what we're looking at right now. And let me make sure that this is full size. Okay, so this is actual size. Let me make sure this is actual size. This one is. This is the actual size of the image. This is 200 pixels. This is 200 dots here. This is 800 dots wide. Okay, and now this one is, this is full size, I just can't fit it on the screen. This is 1600. Okay, so you see how much more detail and information is there to help shortcuts a lot get you a nice clean trace. Okay, so back to the 800 pixel version. And just right off the bat, you can see here, without any smoothing, and without really having to play with the contrast too much, because again, we have a lot of detail. We don't really, just want to make sure that the contrast is set right. But once we get down here, these adjustments don't really do much. And now what's happening here, when I get to about 129, let's go 127, 126, JPEG files contain um, compression. They're compressed files, meaning they're not full size. They're, there's an algorithm that kind of um, does some things that the human eye typically doesn't pick up to save space as far as file size goes. And with that comes this sort of pixelation that happens. And again, um, to the naked eye, you're not going to see it. But when you get down to trying to trace things, and if you don't have your contrast set right, you may pick up these weird little squares. Okay, And this is all just compression-related artifacting. So contrast is somewhat important to make sure that you're not getting those little weird artifacts. But at one point, at some point here, 
you know, the difference between 30 and 95 is not really going to make that much of a difference. Now, because this is 800 pixels, when I hit update preview, I personally, and this is completely subjective, uh, I like how this looks. I think it looks nice and crisp and clean. Maybe we could smooth it a little bit. I'll set it to 25 and let's smooth it and see what that looks like. Typically, when you have a smooth value higher than zero, you will be removing some of the nodes, which isn't a bad thing as long as the output looks good to you. So right now, smoothing is at zero. Let me update the preview, and you can see here I've got 1,200 nodes. And I'm going to set this to 50 and update the preview, see what it looks like. That looks really good, and I'm at about just under 750 nodes, which is great. And let's open this up. Okay, now see, you can see here, this is the 800 pixel version, and this is the 1600 pixel version, and they both look pretty darn good to me um, without really zooming in on it. And this is almost 12 inches wide. Let's make it 12, roughly 11.4, which is what most machines can cut. Let's make these about the same size, and just kind of look at them side by side, and, you know, without really putting a magnifying glass up to it, I'm not able to tell the difference. They both look pretty darn good. But now let's take a look at something real quick. Let's hit the preview button here, and when you hit the preview button, you'll kind of see what the machine is going to cut, and there's a little button down here that will allow you to show the nodes. Try to make them both the same size, and let's preview that again. And you can see that here, the 800 pixel version actually does have less nodes here. Okay, so the takeaway from this tutorial is that you definitely want to find high resolution images. It doesn't have to be huge, because in this case, this 1600 pixel image and this 800 pixel image to the naked eye, they don't look much different and probably won't look much different when you cut them out. But as you can see, this one, the 1600 one, is probably going to take your machine a little bit longer to cut because of the uh, amount of nodes that it has. But the visual quality is really um, the same.